Well, I've had this tent for about seven years. Oz tent R4. It's been a bloody good tent, actually. Um, I obviously don't pack it for myself, um, but when Elise, the miso, um, is on a trip like she is this weekend, yeah, she and she likes it because you can stand up and get changed. Unlike a rooftop tent, she got a little bit sick of. So we're going to run through a quick setup. What's this called? Floor saver. It's basically a mesh, a mesh floor. You could use any of them shade cloth things you can buy, but this one is made the right size. Especially on ground like this, would recommend it because um, you don't want to be puncturing your, the bottom of your the bottom of your tent. All right, one zip him. The bag probably could be a fraction bigger, but I do store other things in here, not just the tent. I've got the fly, which I'm pretty sure is sold separately. Um, but I keep that in here and I keep two poles in here for the awning. But we'll get to that in a second. So, unclip the little clip and then point the arrow, that's how I think about it, as an arrow, that's the front of the tent. And then with this mat, with the RV4, I put it just, just behind, or sort of in line with the back of the mat. And then you got two arms that fold out. Probably should have brought this way a fraction. Fold them out. Step inside the tent. Pull him up and then inside here, you got an arm each side. So if we just have a look in here, there's these two arms that's on slides, basically like an over center latch, so you sort of set up one on that side. And then that one on that side. So now that'll stay there. But just to double check and to stop a little bit of flapping wind, there's a couple of Velcro tabs underneath that. So now that, that can't actually go down. With the back, pull this out. Ah, the old hammer. Thanks, mate. We'll knock a few pegs in. This is uh, probably not ideal peg and ground, but... Now, seven years of use, I've come lazier and lazier with setting this thing up. So minimal pegs, quicker setup time, quicker pack up time. Two in each corner at the back, or sorry, one in each corner, sorry. That pulls that little bit of extra room in there. We can get something with no rocks in there. Where are we? Now with these middle two, it's not, I've found it's not super necessary, but it does, the back of the tent does tend to want to hang if your head is at the back here. Pulling these two lifts it up more. So if you've got good pegging ground or if you've got longer pegs, I don't hit them in the whole way. Otherwise that's obviously gonna be pulled down there, which probably, look at that, doesn't mean much anyway. Um, so that's the back done. Get a couple more pegs here. Uh, 
and like I said, if you were just an overnighter, that you could throw your mattress in there and that's not going anywhere. Um, I'd recommend pe pegging them back to the corners, but these front ones, unless it was gonna be real windy or, um, or you're gonna be here for a few, few days or whatever, we tend to peg them out because you can get it nice and taut. find a way down there without hitting some rocks somewhere and when you're putting this last one in just pull that nice and tight so this is what I like about it if you are staying well if you got sunny weather, if it's raining. Um, the beauty about this is you've got a home base now. So if you don't need to set your awning up on your car, this one, you've got some shade and whatever without having to set that up. If you wanna go and do a track or if you wanna go down the shop or if you need to, whatever, if you need to use your car, you've still got a home base with a shelter. Um, it comes with a couple poles. So that's why the mat is slightly longer. So now you've got a floor in your outdoor living area too. Leave him a little bit loose. Slap this next one in. They're bloody pretty good, um, pretty good quality gear too. This is by no means sponsored. This this video either. I've literally bought this out of my own pocket, well, a long time ago, and still there is a lot of positives to using this tent or and this setup, which we'll go through in a bit. But even you can tell the pegs are good quality, good gauge. The ropes, nice and thick. If I was to do that again, I'd go a bit wider, but for the sake of this. There she is. A little bit on the piss, but hey, that's all good fun. So yeah, that's the basics of it. You can grab a chair, and no matter where your vehicle is, you got cover, you got shelter. Um, yeah, so for us, at least for myself, um, I'll chuck it in a minute. We've got, we did have an inflatable mattress, uh, self-inflating mattress that was um, quite bulky to pack up in the car. So that has to go, that can't stay in your tent like a rooftop tent with all your, all your gear in there. So back in the day when we first bought that, it was quite, it was the width of a double bed and it rolled up to the size of a, basically double swag. Um, we've just recently purchased a new mattress which packs up to probably the size of a big sleeping bag and it's much more comfortable. So there's, a, there's definitely good things on the market now as far as space saving, weight saving and comfort, which are all important for us. Um, so self-inflating mattress, obviously your sleeping bags and your pillows, they still all have to go in the car. So that is a downside compared to a rooftop tent where everything is in there. Um, but other than pack up time and, and set up time, these, they're the two main cons in my opinion on this setup the pros um and i'll probably forget a few of these but now with this setup all that weight of all that sleeping gear your tent um is off the car so if you are basing yourself somewhere central and heading out to do tracks you've probably i haven't weighed all this so i'll, I'll put that down in here the weight of the total setup but i'd be guessing 50 60 kilos probably it's you know there is a little bit of weight in the tent so that's 60 kilos 50 60 kilos off your roof um, and out of your car so that's that's great for any any um off-roading um you have a base as well instead of pulling down your rooftop tent and as quick and as easy as it is if you want to go um you need to go to drive away for whatever for whatever reason you have to 
pull everything down and all of a sudden your campsite's bare. It's got two chairs laying around and it's pretty well abandoned. All right, so I just quickly chucked the, um, I think it's an XP. XP is the brand, the mattress. Um, it's equivalent to a queen size and both sides you've probably got, this is the RV4, there is bigger size. I think there's an RV3 and an RV5. Um, probably got half a meter on each side. Um, the missus likes to put her bags and all that sort of junk in there. It also has a big rear window that you can roll up. Also two smaller windows either side. Um, and then obviously this midgy, like quite fine midgy mesh. Um, well, a couple of little vent pockets up there too. Um, it does, and I did purchase back in the day, they have um, basically a wall kit to completely enclose this front annex section. Um, quite expensive. I don't know off the top of my head what I paid for that, but um, I think I used it once. They've been sitting in the shed ever since. Um, I personally, it's just a lot more set up. The reason for this tent, we bought it was because it's quick and easy. Um, all these, you carry a lot more poles, you carry a lot more little bags, not a huge amount of weight in the walls, but set up and pack up is massive compared to what, what this is. Um, the things I would purchase with the tent would be definitely a floor saver of some description. It doesn't have to be an Oz tent one, but um, some sort of protection to protect the back at uh, the bottom of your, of your tent. And also the, um, the, the according fly for the top, because you can't like any tent, um, can get dewy and that fly does help. Also helps to keep an air gap too. So it can keep a bit of, bit of heat out if you're in summer weather. Um, pros and cons to this situation. Um, and I'm going to refer a fair bit to a rooftop tent because there's so many on the market and they are so convenient. Um, a con to this is, although it doesn't take very long, it is still a fair bit longer than setting up um, your modern day hard shell rooftop tents where you can literally unlatch it, push it up, get in there. Um, super, and Marco's with his James Brood on top of the Defender. Um, especially when you're doing overnighters, if you're haul long hauls and you just get to the, wherever you, you um, halfway through your trip, pop the, pop the tent, get in, in the morning, pop it down, go. That's where they come into their own. Um, overnighters where you're not in a rush, uh, where you're sticking around a bit in the morning or um, any multiples of days. I, in my opinion, these take trumps. Um, you can set up a little bit of a camp um, and, and you can use, you can use your car, basically jump in turnkey, you're gone. You don't have to pack anything up. Um, price wise, I think, now don't quote me on this either. Um, you better off just to Google it, but they're above a thousand bucks, which isn't a cheap tent, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, that you can probably see why a rooftop tent is so expensive. If something like this with nowhere near the, um, engineering and whatever goes into those. So um, not a cheap tent, uh, especially if you're adding all the other goodies with walls, floors, flies and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a, definitely something to be, to be thought about is the price. Um, one big pro for, for Elise um, is she likes to be able to walk in and out of it without climbing a ladder, stand up in it and get changed. Um, it's just the ease of access, I guess. So that's, that's, mate, if you're keeping the missus happy, you're gonna be out camping more. So that's a big tick in my, bo in my box. Uh, also with this, there is enough, and this is the, the middle size one. Like I said, there's an R3, RV3 and an RV5. Uh, if weather is terrible, like sideways rain, you could easily put your deck chairs inside there. Um, even if you pushed your mattress to the side or fold it in half or whatever you've got. Um, you could sit in there, you could eat in there. You probably shouldn't cook in there, but you definitely could and definitely have. Um, but you could sit in there and, ha and play cards. Um, there's room in there to, to, you know, to do that sort of thing. Um, doing that in a rooftop tent, probably a little bit more difficult. You'd probably just get in, if, if the weather's that bad, you just jump in and say, oh, I'm going to bed, catch you later, see you in the morning. Um, yeah, again, having this shelter the whole time, once again, 
you don't necessarily need to set up your car awning every time. A big one for me is the flappability of a tent. Um, I generally don't run the fly on this unless you know it's constant dewy mornings where you've got that much condensation. Um, it feels like you pissed the bed in the morning. But with no fly, this thing's relatively good, especially with like, when this is rolled up. Um, there's no flap obviously with that because it's in a tight bundle. But as is here, the thing's pretty good in, in wind, um, which is saying something for tents because that nothing drives me insane more than a flapping tent at night thinking that your guy ropes are uh, falling off and your tent's about to blow away. So um, another thing is you don't actually need guy ropes. Without this, if this isn't folded out, completely rope free, self-supporting. Uh, I never thought that would be a good thing on a swag, but we love it now. So simple, relatively quick. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a bloody good purchase and I'd definitely buy one again.